Hello and welcome to Practice Time with Ms. Rona, a series where I open up my practice room to the world. For those of you tuning in for the first time, my name is Rona May Arca and I am a registered music teacher in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I've been teaching piano and music theory since 2001. Joining me today are seven, and hopefully eight, virtual choir singers. We're all here together to discuss our adventures with virtual choir, and preparing for various projects, and sharing some of our memorable experiences. And we also have a list of questions that were sent in by viewers, students, and colleagues. So, welcome everybody. Hi. All right. So thanks for having us. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for being here. Let's start with Jan. Okay. Well, I'm probably the, uh, the most amateur of the bunch. I'm not a professional musician or singer. My first virtual choir was number three. Uh, water night and talk about diving into the deep end. No pun. I sang alto for the very first time in my life in water night because I took a look at the sopranos and I said, no yeah. way. And from then I went into virtual choir four and five D field and the last one is six. And I've done two other virtual choir projects, which are stars and the 100th commemoration of the armistice, the silent night. Uh, basically, my, my role has, as I, I've seen in the virtual choir family, and I do consider family, is basically host. You know, if anybody wants to come to Quail Hill, they know where to find us. And that's me. We have and a Sean. Sean! Sean! Yeah! 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 It's so good to see everybody. It Great is to so see good you to have you. have you. Never seen some of you live, so it's like awesome. So, Amy. Hi, I'm Amy. So the last Eric Whitaker Virtual Choir was the first one that I've done. So it was called Sing Gently. Is that what it's called, yeah. guys? <laughs> I'd wanted to do one for years, and lockdown in Canada finally gave me a chance to do it. And then since then, my church choir and I joined choir in Calgary, um, New West Symphony and Chorus uh, in September. So now I've done a couple of virtual projects with them. Um, just living in the snow here in Calgary right now and that's about it. <laughs> Shovel on and stay warm. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of snow, Jackie has lots of snow. Well, well, lots for Nashville. Uh, so I'm Australian and I, my first virtual choir was actually VC3 as well, where I met most of you guys yeah. and the VC Friends community was formed. I was living in London at the time. I was pregnant. I recorded, had Joey. I went on that Millennium Bridge and had VC3 was being broadcast. So I had put that on YouTube. And then since then, I've done all the other virtual choirs of Eric's. My kids joined me in Deep Field and then they were also part of the global youth choir for the commonwealth game uh, and but then since then i've recorded besides eric's another 25 outside of eric's virtual choirs but i think i might top lady jan as being the amateur i don't pr sing professionally or play professionally but i can play the piano but uh, I, I love singing my kids hate that i'm I can turn anything into a song. They go, oh, mom, can you stop singing? You're embarrassing me. But yeah. So, and oh, in when I lived in San Diego, so I've only been in Nashville for about three years. I have met Marty. Oh. I've met Colette and Jan in the parking lot of a botanical yes. garden. And I've met Elizabeth three or four times now, I think. Yeah. She's been visiting LA. And we hug. And we hug. We did. Fleeting hug. <laughs> but we hug. Yeah. We had two meetups at in Irvine at the Big Spectrum with uh, right. Corax. That was great fun. So, okay, I guess next in our little Brady Bunch thing is me. So, I introduced <laughs> myself earlier, but not my virtual choir history. So, my first virtual choir project was also VC3 Water Night. So, I've done eleven virtual ensemble projects. Probably my hardest one 
I don't know. It's a tie. Water night was pretty brutal. But the other one that I would consider the hardest was the one where I was doing a martial arts demonstration to taiko drums. Oh, yeah. That's, that's got to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was wild, though, because it, it really yeah. brought the, the techniques to life. Uh, and But the thing is, the timing for music and the timing for the techniques are different. So trying to balance the two. Did you ever publish that? I don't recall seeing it. But yeah. I yep. I'm up here in, in Edmonton, uh, in Alberta, for everyone. I'm trying to think of how many virtual pro musical projects I've done, whether it been just participant or created, and I think I'm probably around 13 or 14. And that started with, with Eric Whitaker's Sleep, Virtual Choir oh, 2. Just... Yeah, and that was a real, that really kind of, you know, started for me. And then through through the the years you know different things have happened and you know friendships have been forged and you know we've we didn't want to wait in some cases for another virtual project from eric yeah. whitaker so it was like okay well let's do something ourselves and yeah. and uh you know back when i was a you know energetic young 20 20s person um so old i uh oh, I, I definitely so had more old. energy to do those He's kind of so things old. but you yeah. know now of course with with the pandemic and everything i think we've I've probably you know helped out with about four or five um of these virtual projects now and yeah i mean it, it's helping keep all of us connected and together and helping keep ensembles afloat especially right now when you know grant money and sponsorship money is is incredibly important uh, to keep organizations afloat much like you know my, the choir that i sing with um up here in Edmonton, Kronos Folk Ensemble. Uh, you know, technology has has definitely brought us all together, and and uh, you know, we it's it's been amazing. So, weren't you in on one of the, the one? I think the very first one I did, other than Eric's, was the hymn to Axiom, and um, oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the hymn to Axiom. Yeah. That one. That one. Um, that was produced. Awesome. Yeah, that was a fun yeah. one. Yeah, it was, and you did a yeah. great job directing. Thanks, yeah. Chuck. All right, Paulette. Yay. Um, hello from just outside of Liverpool in England. I came across Eric when they were doing Virtual Choir 2 and I signed up for it and then chickened out of recording it. So so I only started with three, pretty much the same as everybody else. I was lucky enough to go to Belfast to actually see that premiere. Yeah. Oh, that's yes. amazing. Mm -hmm. I got frowned at by everybody there because I was videoing everything to send it back to you guys, but never mind. <laughs> I've done four, five and six um, VCs with Eric as well. And then I've done about another, maybe a half a dozen different things. I did the uh, Him of Axiom with Chad and I think we did a Silent Night thing in yeah, German. Yeah, with Patrick. And I've just finished uploading another one now. And I normally, in real life, when they're or allowed, sing with a, a ladies' barbershop choir. And I run yes. um, a regional NHS choir where we do a big Christmas concert. But I'm not professional, far from it in any way whatsoever, with anything. But I have been um, lucky enough to visit many of you around the world. Been stayed with Marty. I've met. Elizabeth, Yay. I've been over to Canada to see Jan, I've met Jackie, met Chad, so gosh, I've, I've only got a couple more squares to fill off of this lot, really. I mean, <laughs> you were our first, Colette, you yeah. were our first VC guest. I was very honoured, yes, very lucky, it opened up a whole new world for me. <laughs> yes, so you're, you're out of recovery now, are you, Colette, from your trip? Just about. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might as well drink the bottle of wine, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's still here. <laughs> Never turn that down. <laughs> I, I had no room in my suitcase for this bottle of wine, so I said, keep it, and, and oh, I'll yeah. pick it up next time I come, and it's still there. <laughs> it is. Party. Big amateur here in, in so many ways. So, And uh, like everyone here, I, I had heard of Eric um, a little bit in 2011, but hadn't seen the virtual choir thing. So I totally missed out on, on BC2, but later heard about it. And I heard way in also in Australia um, singing her, the learning track for that. And I just sat there and cried. <laughs> so, it was so beautiful. So, and I did since get to sing that in New York a couple of times. So I've done all of the Eric ones, like three, four, five, six. I was the second string snowflake in Glow. I sang at my church choir, St. Thomas More in Oceanside. <clears throat> For many years, I was in 
uh, a big kind of masterworks corral, non-auditioned. I don't, you know, I'm just don't feel qualified in any way to do. You got to take a theory mm -hmm. test. You got to sing, you know, sight singing. And it's like, no, my brain just got spazzes out. So it's like, no, you get what you get. And I work hard. I do my bit, but just didn't do that. I was a painter in college. I didn't do, I sang junior high and high school and then didn't sing for 20 years. <laughs> Probably done all six of Eric's and about 30 to 35 other ones, but I'm kind of picky. You know, I don't really do too many pop ones. I'm the crazy grandma. I love minions, butterflies, chocolate, and booze, and music, and all of you. Well, if it's any consolation, Marty, sight singing terrifies me as well. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Evil. Yeah. And soulfish? What the? Is that all about? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, next up is Elizabeth. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth, and I'm currently living in northwestern Indiana in the city of Valparaiso. I'm originally from L.A., born and raised there. My mother is a uh, now retired music director, organist, <laughs> church organist for the Archdiocese in Los Angeles. So I literally grew up in the choir loft and I had a toy box in the rectory and five masses every Sunday, every novena, every funeral, every wedding. For me, sitting in the pew is really weird to be down with the people. <laughs> <laughs> my view, I'm, I'm used to being up on top and looking down, you know, it's, it's really weird. So I grew up singing uh, with my mom and she was very true. She's from Vienna. So I grew up with Old school. Mozart and I mean, she did the Requiem masses. And, and then, you know, when I grew up, it was, everything was in Latin for, for the Catholic masses were on Latin. And then Vatican II happened overnight. So I grew up with music and because I was there all the time, I learned to play the flute and I learned to do lots of other things that nobody else did. Did uh, singing in, in high school and theater and then I got married and the only outlet I had was with my mom uh, with her choirs and I would just go in, she'd do productions and stuff and I would produce her shows. I'm now a retired college professor of, uh, of English and learning skills in Los Angeles. And when I moved to Chicago to be with the love of my life, the distance with everyone was hard. And so I was, you know, Facebook and everything was just starting. And so virtual was new, but it kept me connected. And I, one day I'm just kind of like Googling around. I don't know how I came across Luke Saramka, but it had already been out. So I looked there and there was sleep and it was the final day to submit. Oh. I'm like, oh, you're oh, no. Are you kidding? So I had to wait, you know, cause then he was doing like, you know, virtual one, virtual two. And then, so everybody was assuming then come would be three. So you had to wait that whole year. And I got in uh, with the uh, VC friends. So water night was my first one. And so I've got all of the Eric VCs from there on. And then I think it's only 19 other projects and I'm very selective of what I do because it's like it it's you, you want it to have something to, to mean to me that's why mm -hmm. I do it or and exactly. the group of friends that I'm with I'd rather do it with people that I know and instead of just doing it just to do it virtual choir friends I mean it's been that for me that connection and be, and virtual choir with everybody else when I was all alone in Chicago with, you know, really not that many friends and with our schedule with Jonathan as a filmmaker, it was just like, it's <laughs> your, your schedule's weird. So I couldn't join a choir. Mm -hmm. So because I couldn't say on Thursday, I, I could be there at seven o'clock because we could be filming somewhere and I couldn't. So that's where VC then became really, really important and a part of my life that I could just, I didn't have to be at rehearsals every week. <laughs> and I could just kind of show up and then we'd just do our little projects and we'd have our, you know, our, our meetups and stuff like that. I don't think VC Friends is ever going to go away, even if Eric does not do any more virtual choirs, because for him, it's about evolution. It's where it has to go to the next level. And it's, he's done the world. And I got super involved with VC Friends and met Almost all of you. Rana May, one day. I know. <laughs> and Sean. <laughs> Amy, you're brand new. So I, would, I didn't know you before. So, <laughs> yeah. Or the Saint, we 
were supposed to be singing together, Sean, right? We were going to be yeah. singing in, um, in New York. York. We yeah. were supposed oh. to be there in uh, November. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. It'll come. They're, they're still working on that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers hey. crossed. Sean. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I was raised in Berkeley, California, um, to parents who refused to allow me to study music. I knew by the age of three that this was all I ever wanted to do. And, and you know, it really was just a matter of waiting through my entire childhood wow. until I was a teenager and could start, you know, like spending time after school with a guitar and a banjo and that sort of thing. And I, you know, ended up in a bluegrass band in high school and mm -hmm. My parents held firm the entire time. That Why did they hate music so much? That's terrible. <laughs> well, they, you know, they, they like recorded music, yeah. but they never wanted to hear a wrong note from anybody ever. Yeah. So high school yeah. choir, and I think I'm not alone when I say that it was my high school choir teacher who, who said, you've got something. You need mm. to you know, seriously consider doing music because you have a gift and you know that kind of thing and and it was the first time anybody had ever said that to me and it was such a huge That's affirmation crazy. and it wasn't even about my singing voice it was about my relationship to music mm -hmm. that was the key thing that i heard from him and so i switched from playing bluegrass guitar to taking some classical guitar lessons and I entered UC Berkeley as a classical guitar performance major Yay. with a million years worth of study. You know, and I, I ended up getting pretty good, right? But then I discovered world music and oh, everything changed. I, I became an ethnomusicologist. Um, yeah. And I like going to our sort of local choir group in, in town and one of my former students was in the choir and I thought, okay, yeah, sure. I'm happy to go. And they got a, a small group of 16 together and they did Luke's Arunque. Oh, oh. Oh. First time <laughs> I'd heard of Eric Whitaker, right? Oh. And, and so, and I was in there, I was just weeping, oh my God, it was amazing. And, um, and I, you know, went to the program, Eric Whitaker. Who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> so I looked him up and I heard the marvelous recording oh of Luxo Rumque and then um, Sleep I had, I think, just come out. Mm. And then it was just like, oh, sign yeah. me up. My life has changed forever. And so then my first one was Water Night. I almost gave up because every, you know, so many people were submitting at the last minute. And, yeah. Oh. Sean, do you remember what happened when we tried to hit record being the Queens of the very, very, very last minute? Oh, God. We broke, we broke the internet. We oh, the internet. oh, it was we broke you. Our videos. you remember that? Yes, I do. I do, absolutely. And, and oh. I will say something right now here, and I'm sure you will all agree, and God blessing Jack Roland and the yes, rest of the team who yeah. I said, what are you doing up so late? And he said, I'm here. He said, I'm sweeping to make sure that all the videos get in. And he said, did you put yours in? Did you hit record and did it go? And I said, yeah. And he said, okay, I'm on to the next one. Then I'm just making sure that you got your video in. Yeah. God bless him. God bless him. Yes. Yep. I happen to remember some of us ended up getting uh, put into Facebook jail because we were yep. commenting too quickly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm trying to make sure that everyone got a response. Yeah, <laughs> so then we had to create another Facebook account so we could continue on. And I'm sure that wow. other account is still <laughs> hanging out somewhere. That was before the forums, because that's when they did the yeah. forums for VC4. I ended up doing, you know, all the other ones that Eric did, um, including Glow. And I never did see my my little face, you know, as a snowflake, but it doesn't matter. It was fun. And then, you know, the hymn to Axiom. Oh, um, and Chad, thank you so much for doing that dazzling piece. And I played that for my students. Um, oh, wow. And I didn't yeah. tell them that I was in it. And <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! I was actually giving a lecture about uh, musical responses to political issues. Mm -hmm. And oh. I said, oh, there's a virtual player, blah, blah, blah. And then I flew past right on the screen and, and they said, 
What? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that's so oh, yeah. and then you know pretty soon that little ripple through the crowd of hey <laughs> 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 that face. It spawned on them so, it was great and, and i have not really done any other than that but i have like all of us i've learned how to uh you know do singing on zoom and to teach songs i teach a lot of irish songs in gaelic and english and it's and i've, I've learned a lot of songs on zoom from teachers in ireland and you know it's just added more music to the world right it's been so hard to experience the lockdowns but this has been you know uh, a real godsend i think for so many of us Absolutely. not only to be able to see somebody live right and to yeah. speak out loud, which, you know, I don't do that much, you know. I mean, I I am married and my husband and I speak, right? But the sort of chatter <laughs> thing that we do in real life, you know, I haven't done it all. You know, as someone who had music denied for my whole childhood, to, you know, to be able to just swim in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and to connect with people all over the world and and then of course to meet Eric Whitaker. Oh my ah! God. and he remembers your name. I don't care if you're a little punk yeah. whoever. He I don't will know how remember he remember you he and did. your husband or whoever you're with. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I know you. Yeah. 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 He's so genuine. I want to you know finish by saying that, you know, that was uh added a whole new dimension to my musical life. And in fact, healed some of the, you know, I don't get to play music stuff from yeah. way back, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and so I am a much much happier person as a result of you know being able to do the virtual choir stuff. Sean made a point though about you know with the connecting with the uh, with the whole uh, lockdown with all of us. I think us in virtual choir, we were super prepared of how to deal with being, a lot of us are isolated anyway, and we've had practice with working on, you know, with the technology a little bit, but we're, we're kind of used to connecting online yeah. in a different way and maintaining those friendships than just and having that community. So for, I, I felt like, you know, when Sing Gently came out, BC6 is like piece of cake, you know, yeah. it was just like, ah, <laughs> oh, so, okay. Are they are so say we've been waiting for this for our whole life. I mean, you know, when this came, yeah, Sing right. Gently, right. We've been waiting for this. Right, yeah. it, it, we were, it's like, and it wasn't expected. You know, people were like, oh, oh Eric's got to do that. I was, I knew deep field that was it. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. that right. was it. And and it, and I was just all like, thirteen oh, notes we sang. Yeah. You know? <laughs> thirteen and notes at the end. <laughs> sense of community that really I think yeah. was there. And then those of us who had done it before were able to really jump in to the uh the Sing Gently page, to the VC6 page and help other people who are brand new because so many people it overwhelming. Brand new. And it was really interesting to watch that um fellowship go on in vc6 on the, on the facebook page because of that so and they didn't have to do the forums necessarily because we could just go in there and it's like jack says you know ohana we never leave anyone alone and we were there to help everyone you know people who were yeah. blind who were deaf yep. it was really yep. fascinating yeah. people who were just <laughs> mentally on the edge <laughs> And yeah. it just yeah. takes one person to be there for them. And yeah. it was a huge thing for people during that first bit of that isolation. And um, I think, you know, our, our VC group really helped a lot of people through that because it oh, was- Oh, you did. We've been there. You did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, most of us Absolutely. are there and that's why we're connected so much, you know, yeah. so, and- yeah. Well, if I if I may, I wanted to give a, a wonderful, you know, a big huge uh, shout out and and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Rona May, yes. uh, for, for Water Night because I was oh. having remember I was having trouble trying to reset very low note. I swear it had so many bars on top of it. It was like being in jail. I mean. <laughs> 
I tried. I tried oh. my darndest to get down to that note, and I couldn't. Oh. And, and I was so in despair, and I said, "Do I, you know, do I record?" And you, bless you, you said, "You know what? Don't worry about it. There's going to be there's going to be thousands of people. Or yes, hundreds of people that's always the way <laughs> who will yeah. be able to reach that note. Yeah. So they'll cover for yeah. you. They have you. They have your back." And yeah. I thought, okay, well, that made me feel a lot better. If I can't reach that particular note, it doesn't matter. I'm going to sing what I can and send it in anyway. And, and I did. Exactly. I did it for you. It's okay. Yeah. I just have a question for yeah. Chad about this piece that everybody's talking about. Can you talk about that? Oh, gosh. Um, and I didn't realize that this piece had the impact uh, that it did, <laughs> to be honest with you. It came about when... Um, I came across Vienna Tang, um, the original um, artist for the of the song. There was a choir in Vancouver, um, Coastal Sound uh, Youth Choir, that had uh, arranged it, and um, and I and I heard it and was it was I was just cops back. You know, it has such a powerful statement about um, how technology and AI, artificial intelligence, can really just you know get into our heads, right? I mean, we can be talking about potatoes and all of a sudden you're getting advertisements on Facebook for potatoes right and and this piece has the poetry is so striking that I, I couldn't ignore it and as someone that's in the IT world that was that was really it was just like wow this is this is this is this piece embodies my concern with 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 some of these technologies I got a copy of the uh, the arrangement, did a couple tweaks, so it worked a little better as a virtual choir, and then came out and said to the to the folks in the room here and and said, "Hey, let's do this thing." It, it turned into a fantastic uh, project, and it, I don't know how many views it has on YouTube now. I haven't looked recently, but yeah, and I think that the co combination of um, technology that we needed to use to 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 produce that piece and and the statement that it's making was just absolutely like perfect because we were using the technology that this piece w w is also criticizing right and i found that that was um yeah. uh, really yeah. uh, just it, it couldn't have been a better statement yeah. but the visuals you did cool. with it too were very strong well, that wasn't me that was patrick um oh shoot oh, david johnson i vaguely uh, remember some no. name no, Patrick, Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams. Patrick yeah. Williams. Yeah. He also did the armistice one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He did. He did the visuals. Yeah, and and it turned out incredible. Twenty-six thousand. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks for yeah explaining that. That's like a very interesting yeah. juxtaposition. Just yeah, using the same technology that you know yeah. it's talking about. Okay, I'll check mm -hmm. it out. for one of the projects and it may be it's by the paradise you know doing more than one part oh yeah so yeah. interesting because of course you always have to choose when you're in live performance but i think i did six different lines or something maybe oh. it was it that one i don't know right <laughs> It's not that the, the actual tunes blend together, but the experience of recording and, and that kind of thing does. To be able to fully participate, you know, as like four different personas or whatever, you know, alto one, alto two, tenor one, tenor two, soprano one. I think, yeah, I think I did five. It's really a joy to have access, right? All that access. Chad, you recorded multiple voices, didn't you? I did. I remember doing a number, and I find it, it, it you get to be much more familiar with with the piece, and and you get to learn. Actually, I think it's it's, it's very interesting how you know generally you go in and you, you go to choir oh, no. and choir rehearsal, and you sing your part and you sing it like it's your melody, and that's great, right? But when you can go and you you, you sing your part, you you can learn the baritone part. Yeah, you learn the ten or two part, and you start to learn the relationships between those those parts, mm. and how important different you know when you when you're reading music and you're singing together and you're harmonizing the different verticals that you you go through. How you know it's like okay, this is why you know this is why that composer wrote it this way. 
the different qualities of, di of different parts, right? And, and you also kind of start to appreciate your own voice type in that, wow, yeah, I'm really not a tenor. I really can't do that. I don't have the qualities of my voice to make that happen, and that's okay. It makes you appreciate your own voice part a little more, too. I've never done multiple I... parts for a BC, but I've just... I've just done one in Italian, which I just submitted today. So that's the first, oh. well, not the first time I've sung in Italian, but the first time I've had to do a, a VC oh. and record in Italian. So that was interesting. But oh. I actually learned while I was doing it, I actually sang through because I, I sang soprano too, which is like probably the top of my range, but I just loved the line. So I did it. Yeah. But then I also yeah. went and sang through the alto part and the tenor part, which are like much easier. It was actually interesting just to even sing through them because you're right, it did give you much more of an idea of how the whole piece was structured oh, and, nice. and where everything linked into each other. It was nowhere near as complex as Eric's with like 12 parts in it, but it, it was still interesting to see how all those bits knitted together. It was just, I just found that really interesting. I wouldn't have submitted them all as different tracks. We, we only got to do one each, but it was yeah. interesting even just to sing them through and listen to them and see how it all worked. But I, I think I've done two or three parts. It depends on the piece, you know, sometimes just for fun. And, and now people are kind of limiting one part. That's all you get to do. And that's it. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> think, it's just too many, though. And when someone asks for one part, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I don't know yeah. if you've ever recorded yourself and then tried to harmonize with yourself. And it's, yeah, it's very, very good. difficult. <laughs> listen, yeah, it's, never tried number that. One. Yeah, no, it's it's very difficult number one to listen to yourself because you're you're your own worst critic and that of course is a huge barrier to entry when somebody is wanting to participate in a virtual choir or your your regular choir says hey we got to go virtual you know listening to yourself is scary and, and rightfully so but when you've recorded something and then you go back and you sing another part layer it on top of that that first track you just recorded there are very, very interesting things that happen that, you know, listening, Good you have to be perfectly in tune with yourself for that to make any sense. Otherwise, it sounds like garbage. And I think that that also is why, um, you know, they, they ask for one part, you know, because your own voice just doesn't, it just, yeah. it's so difficult to make that work. Yeah. I learned to be more straight tone. Yeah, you know, I try. Yeah. Like, you have to be more straight tone and very, very even, especially with Eric, because he, he loves straight tone. He doesn't like vibrato. And if you're doing a lot of choral mm. music, it's a totally different sound for for recording to make it blend when you're hearing yourself. You're going, ooh, do I really yeah. sound this way? I, when in, in, but when the, like we were saying earlier, when you're in a, a group of people, you don't necessarily hear that. So I've really worked on being more straight tone with my singing and it's really actually improved and it's because of doing the recordings. It's been interesting to watch that evolve and because uh, I wanted to match whoever's singing, like if it's Julie Gawke, you know, or if it's, um, you know, Matthew Curtis, you know, with his choral tracks. The list. I only have to see the words little man in a hurry and I have a hot flush. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's one of the hardest pieces. That was, that was, oh, it wasn't yeah. a virtual choir, no, anime, but, but it was for DCNI. So we yeah. have to do our memorization tracks. And, and so to do that without the music, but you have, thank God, Matthew in your yeah, ear to sing. Uh, <laughs> but doing Little Man in a Hurry and doing some of those are just so, oh, the city in the sea is just. Yeah. Our cloud, cloud burst and all of you. Know, that's the hardest is doing those mm -hmm. memories. And yeah. I can barely look at them. Okay. I, I, you know, they just, they, it forces you to know it before you get there and you're off. Yeah. Them. By the right. time you get there, that it's no trouble at all. I right. Mean, Cause but... you had a month, you have to do it a month before. Sure. Oh no. Caramos. That was the hardest uh, one. Uh, I didn't do that one. Come on, yeah. Chad. I'm glad I didn't do that it, year. Yeah. Oh, I come on. Heard nothing Caramos good about that piece. It comes <laughs> on my playlist every now and again. And it, it, uh, no. learning, it's funny, you know, how a piece grows on you as, as you learn. And it it's was incredible, cool. right? 
you have such incredible memories thanks mm-hmm. to that piece right oh, um you know well, it was that's... you know there's always those pieces that you learn that you're just you, you kind of slog through you're like oh god I, I really don't enjoy this piece now i go back and listen oh. to recordings of it and go oh yeah like i rem- I, I have so many fond memories with this mm-hmm. piece now that I do oh, love it. it. You know, it's it's a, I've really learned to love that piece. Yeah. And it sounded fabulous from an audience point of view. It sounded absolutely stunning. It was brilliant. And the oh, other piece that, that yeah, they did with Stephen with just the men, that was brilliant. Oh, that was beautiful. And going back to your uh, your your statement, Elizabeth, about it's more straight tone. As much as I love virtual choirs, I think that this is why live performances will never ever be replaced right Mm -hmm. you know this is a great band-aid for what we're you know what we're going through Mm -hmm. right now particularly but you know know, there is some things to be said about a live performance live performances are never perfect and that's what gives them life but also you know you're able to listen across the choir and and hear what other people are doing and in real time make adjustments to what you're doing without even really knowing it you're doing it Mm -hmm. you know at Mm -hmm. some points right and that's where i think that you know you don't need to be a straight tone because you're constantly, you know, working with, with the rest of the choir without having you know, anything going on. Right. It's not so rigid. And I think that that's where, yeah, what we're doing, what what's going on with virtual choirs right now, keeping choirs together and communities together is great, but it will never, ever replace live performance. Yeah. I hope not. yeah Cause sometimes the virtual choirs, we, if you don't have the sound, right you know, for the, for, for yeah. choral groups, if they don't have a good sound mix, it just doesn't sound right. And they're trying to blend like if they're in a choir and just doesn't quite work. Mm-hmm. You know, I just kind of like, Ooh, they tried, you know, um, <laughs> but it sounds like a disjointed live. Everybody's just yeah. kind of like a little off. So I really can't wait for the day that we can yeah, I get a little nervous sometimes. I was like, I hope I can still sing with other people, you know, which we've had <laughs> one, two times in this whole time that we had four of us do a little recorded thing, but we got to sing together all spaced. We didn't need the masks, so we were just recording. Uh, that was for our 12th night thing, just simple little carols, but it was fun. <sighs> we had one afternoon outside under those nice trees, and it was lovely. That's all I've gotten to do, live singing. <laughs> Yeah, last well, summer we had the opportunity to uh, to get together and rehearse. And, you know, it's different right now. Of course, you have to make sure the facility is ventilated. You got doors open, things like that. Oh. Of course, that couldn't happen here now because it's you know, <laughs> three it's degrees fine. or minus 30. <laughs> last week, Hard right? to but... sing when you've got every vibrato. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we had sweaters on and stuff. It was fine, but... You know, it, it is one th- it definitely getting back to singing after, you know, not singing for an amount of time is yeah. definitely challenging, yeah. right? Not to mention also wearing a mask on top of it was, oh, was difficult. You know, it's not, yeah. you know, normally when you you know take a breath to sing, you know, you, you it's a very quick <laughs> thing, right? And right. the volume of air you can take in in, in a matter yeah. of half a beat is 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 not enough with a mask, right? And yeah. And then you get one different. of those goofy duck bill looking things. I have you know? one. I have <laughs> the one. There's you do? little plastic. Uh, it, it works. However, it's interesting because with the mask on, you hear yourself more. It's, I don't think it's for better. It's, it made it very difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really did. And then of course being separated and things like that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to getting back yeah. to, to some kind yeah. of semblance of normalcy. So, yeah. My choir conductor said something interesting on our zoom on Thursday. She said, you know, most of us join choirs because we don't really want to sing by ourselves. But in yeah, virtual that's choirs, that's we that's have nice. to. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah and I'm actually, it, it, you here for a sec. it's just, uh, oh. it works so really good, actually. Um, huh, I haven't seen one like that before. Yeah, Oop. and it's just got a couple of, of oh. wires here. And oh. uh, it, it actually works out really good. I'm actually really happy with this one. So huh. um, and it has oh. brand, you know, my choir is branding on the side there. And so, yeah, if, if you were looking for something to sing in, I would highly recommend one of these singers masks. They're great. Even if you do a lot of public speaking or mm. teaching, 
things like that that you're having to breathe quite a bit you're doing a lot of talking these are great oh. it looks stupid but it works really good oh it's not as goofy as some of them i've seen it's just the uh theater music people in new york and it's like mm -hmm. you look like ducks you know it's just like like a big duck bill i'm just like no so I've been singing nonstop at our um, synagogue for our temple. When COVID first hit and the shutdowns, we recorded live with just our rabbi and we did, we videotaped it and everybody, you know, there was only five of us in the room recording yeah. for the service and stuff to then, because we didn't have a way of doing it live stream at the time. So we were recording like two or three services at a time and then put it up on YouTube. Uh, on that day. And then mm -hmm. on June uh, here in Indiana, we were able to have services back live and I've been singing ever since. So, and then I've been doing cantering also for um, when our main canter isn't there. So like all last for January, I'm up there and I'm like 20 feet away from everybody else. We have new filter system in our, in our synagogue and we have, you know, uh, just all sorts of stuff that, to be able to be live and we're still, you know, everybody's still separated, but I've continued to be singing, you know, live and mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. lucky. Yeah. yeah lucky. <laughs> lucky yeah, same here. Ron, Ron and May, are you singing? I know you're accompanying for, uh, for your church, but are you singing with that too? Cause you've been countering, right? Yeah. Um, I counter once a month and then I play once a month. So Oh, yeah. I think our choir director would prefer if I played both times, but the thing is, I, I also need to keep up with the singing, too, or else yeah. I'll lose it. Yeah. So, right. yeah. And, that's... I mean, being by yourself, I mean, that's forcing me to, to improve as a solo singer. Mm -hmm. Having mm -hmm. spent most of my singing life in choirs, so... It, it, and it's been neat, because, well, when I'm cantering, my brother's playing, and... Oh, that's nice. Um, nice. Before the pandemic, we'd usually be at different services playing oh. for different choirs. So it's been actually nice coming back and saying, no, no, we are going to do this service together once a oh. month. So that's been great. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I canter about two or three times a month. And just this past month, we've gotten to do the recordings. Usually our director does divvy that out to the five or six of us. So I, I got to do that. It's It was a little nerve wracking, though, because they're real. You got to stand here and do this and do that. It is that that kind of nitpickiness drives me nuts sometimes. Our church choir is doing some of the music that we were working on for last Easter, but like everything oh. obviously got shut down. So now we've brought out a couple of those pieces and we're working oh. on them as virtual choir pieces now. It's nice because they were nice songs and it, we, we put a lot of work in them, you know, in February and never got to do them like February 2020. So oh. now this year we're going to try and do yeah. them and have it up on the screen or something at church. So. That'd be cool. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> that's that's a sad thing too. Is a lot yeah. of times choir directors, you know, if you've got a wide age range, and we have a, a fair amount of seniors in ours, and they're not the most technically proficient. I certainly am not. You know, I'm always, how do you do this? You know, like just the most basic computer stuff. I'm like the tech know nothing. But anyway, you know, choir directors don't. They don't no time for all that mess you know so they just don't want to deal with the headache so rona may is a yeah. saint among the tech wizard people you know you I, it just amazes me the stuff you do yeah, yeah well and honestly it all comes back to 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 vc3 because that that mm. opens so many doors for me yeah that's yeah, cool yeah. they are making it easier for the most part to submit your videos because sometimes that sometimes for me has been the hardest part. Some of these little things too, it's like, well, you got to send it this way or that way. So in a roundabout, really klutzy way, I finally get it to whoever, you know, but it's stressful, you know. But you're right about opening doors. I mean, I, it's been the greatest <coughs> joy of my life living where I am to be able to open my doors to the VC family. <coughs> And say, come stay. Rona stayed, and Colette stayed, and you mm -hmm. know, people have, and Stephanie from Germany, and mm. Kristen from, uh, she's now Dolan, yeah. but uh, yeah, oh. so she stayed, and she actually recorded Fly the Paradise. She did her part here. 
The oh, pillows. Oh, how cool. <laughs> no, because it, cool. it was coming up for submission. So she came over and, and she submitted her part. And I remember we had the computer up and pillows stacked around the, the PC because it, the, server, <laughs> the server hum was so loud. Oh, no. And, and we had to you know, put pillows around the microphone so that she would get a, a you know, a clear sound and then, you know, try not oh. to you know, move or do anything while she was recording. So, yeah. So she got her part in while staying here. So that was kind of cool. So I can actually say that we recorded, you know, two parts here. Yay! Yeah. I thought it's a fun challenge, isn't it? Trying to find somewhere that's quiet. I love reading people's things about well i tried to record and there was a chainsaw or i tried to record there were drilling yeah i was the chainsaw yeah, yeah. Oh, it's you had a nightmare, you know? Elizabeth. yeah yeah and trains mm -hmm. and everything and when i had my friend around here to record for vc5 um because oh, she'd yeah. never done it before so i set it all up in the living room with the black background and whatever and it was all nice and quiet and she was doing lovely fair soprano and she's trilling away doing a bit and all i could hear outside all of a sudden was Wah. Oh. Oh. The fell out laughing because we had ducks trying to get in the front door. It was just oh my God. <laughs> right. Okay, start again. Oh, no. Or the or I think oh. I think the the best joke was so you think you want to record, huh? Right. <laughs> and that's the refrigerator <laughs> kicks in just right. as you start. always yeah. yeah always the refrigerator will go yeah yeah. yeah the loo studio you know and i have to turn the water off on the toilet because it'll start going you know oh, yeah. it's like oh i forgot it i have to get on the chair and take the little clock off the wall because it ticks you know so i'm either yeah. recording in there or like i am today i put a screen here especially when i need to use my larger screen for the scrolling and all of that so i don't know it's always something and you know certain times of day are better you know so, my I'm greatest challenge my car uh, yeah. in my garage, in my minivan. So, <laughs> we don't, and we don't have seats in the back. So, I, you know, it's like sitting on the floor because <laughs> it's really hard sitting down and doing a verse and singing. Yeah. So, Jeez. you know, I'm trying oh, to yes. get fitted up a little bit and leaning forward and Oscar. trying just to get, and, and I'm not doing video. I'm just trying to record the audio when you're in oh. Chicago and just trying to get good audio and not disturb neighbors and, <laughs> You know, so I've done it in the garage, in the car with the with the door. That's a really oh, that's cool, a good place to. Um, oh God! Yeah. yeah. So my greatest challenges were when the kids were younger. It was like, okay, mommy needs to do this. Can you? I'll put on a TV show so they'll be quiet. And other times now in Nashville, in the heat of summer, I turn the AC off because otherwise oh, you the whirring of the AC, oh, sweating. <laughs> and then now recently, since COVID happened, we went and got chickens and roosters. So you'll be recording and all of a sudden the chicken just <laughs> roosted the top of throw. And it's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. One of my most recent VCs, I decided to sign. It was um, a Christmas oh. carol, Angels We Have Heard on High. Gloria. Yeah. Realizing that you need a wider background because your hand goes off screen. So that was a challenge. Oh, so new wow. challenges. Yeah. We're using the little section here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Our, yeah. yeah. our VCs. Don't do hand movements yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that's why I've had to sit. If I, the range isn't really high, I can't fit just myself in. My husband stood behind me with a black cloth. Back oh, 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 Yay! Oh, yes. That's dedication right there. It was perfect. That is. Aww. And he falls over. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah that'd be fun. <laughs> But Sean, did you work on the first take? How many times did you have to like hold it out? I did one take. Oh, oh nice. Wow. Yeah, so oh. What BC was that? Was that for? Oh, no. I don't know. No, because I'm like, because some of them are really long. So it was no, it was it was whichever one that we needed a, an actual black backdrop. Oh, that was five BC five, five. deep field. Yeah. Deep yeah. field. Yeah. Yeah. Deep field. Yeah. That was I had to go to a friend's house to do that one because uh, for some reason our, our internet seemed to be really slow. So turns out it really wasn't any better, but you know, it got <laughs> done and all of that. And I've since kind of upgraded and it just depends, but that had me quite worried. <laughs> Thank God I still had my black leather coat. You know, hooray for leathers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Well, the unknown Elto with the paper. Actually, I had a paper bag. Really, for water night? 
I was taking light box treatment at the local hospital. And in order to protect my face, other than my hands and the rest of my body, but protect my face particularly, I had to wear a paper bag inside this light box. Wow. And that was, I know. And because I was taking this treatment for my hands. I had recorded my part, my alto part in Water Night on those one, those little tiny mini recorders and stuck them in my ears. And I was, you know, going over and over and over my alto part in the light box, thinking <laughs> nobody could hear me. Oh. <laughs> Until uh, I came out and the people that were lined up at the physio department waiting to use the light box <laughs> after me were looking at me and saying, you know, we could hear you. <laughs> are you all right, dear? <laughs> Whoa, what, the heck? what are you singing? <laughs> Not about a horse. And so, <laughs> so seriously, so that became, you know, like there was the unknown comic with the paperback over his head. So basically, I was the unknown Elto, and the number <laughs> 1085 was the actual number of my Elto part for Water Night. I was the last, the queen of the very, very, very last minute to sneak in. Somebody has to be that, you know? Yeah. There's a first <laughs> or there's a last, you know? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so that's what that came about. My very first. Eric Whitaker's song that I ever heard because I never heard of him before yeah. was in 2012 when he um, Classic FM played This Marriage. Yeah. That's when I fell in love with, with Eric Whitaker. Oh. That was it. Yeah. That's just... Yeah. So What's really interesting is you know, for those of us who have been lucky enough to have sung with Eric and go through rehearsals and to hear what his process is, for his music and and then to really fully appreciate the background of the music. And then also seeing him with his Eric Whitaker singers. I've seen them oh. twice mm. live. And yeah, I, I know Colette has seen them I don't know how many times in <laughs> London. I've only seen them twice in the in the States. Yeah. And then seeing mm -hmm. him conduct uh, the Master Chorale, like we've all mm -hmm. been there with the Master Chorale. I mean with mm -hmm. Marty, Colette and I. It's a total different appreciation for the music, which you may think it's like a simple song or just kind of like, but then you go, there's always a why behind it. Eric just doesn't compose a song just to compose a song. There's always a some deeper meaning to it. Well, except for like animal crackers, but you know, we won't go there. <laughs> those are, oh, those crack me or, up. Chad, you had uh, the moo, right? I had the moo. You had the moo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's been as part of the whole thing to get to know more of the catalog of Eric, right? Mm -hmm. And then that gives you another appreciation for other composers too, because we get to have this insight to him when we go, because we'll have like the listening parties to uh, some of the lectures he's done and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, too so fun. Yeah. He comes up with these random things that are working on like when I went in 2013 we all got to do is a kind of a last minute piece that oh okay we get this extra thing called after great pain and it's part of the song cycle of I don't know if it was Christina Rossetti or one of those English poets but that song had deep personal meaning because it was about his father who right. had to undergo some surgery and it went badly and he's in an excruciating pain and the song will just gut you. I mean, you thought some of the other ones were puddle time. This it just, if you've had a loss in your life, especially a loved one or anyone who's undergone any kind of pain, the song, it's a slightly bit uplifting at the very end. So it's not horrible, but it's, it's super emotional. And same with Alleluia. Uh, I just cry every time I listen to that one. What about Sacred then, Veil, for goodness sake? Oh, that, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that Marty, too. you saved us with having Kleenex. And the next day, I, you know, we, oh, we were there yeah. for the, the premiere weekend. So we went to both yeah. shows. Both, both of performances. Them, yeah. So Marty had the, the issue. She's like passing them down the aisle. <laughs> and then the next day, I came in with a stack of Kleenex. Everybody, here, one for you, one for, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You all need them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, yeah. and you knew what was coming. Yeah. Um, that and and what? when David heard. Oh, yes. my God. Oh, I yeah. Ugh. Every single yeah. time I hear it. And every time. I don't think I would ever be able to sing it if. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I remember seeing order. them do that. They did, they did that live. He did it live at um, 
in London with his own singers, and, and he very rarely does it live because he said he finds it too emotional and too distressing to do it. But they did it live at one of the concerts there, and and even then, some of the singers were in bits by the end of it. You could see it in their faces. Yeah. And same with all the sacred veil stuff. It's not right, going to be widely hard. done because it's just too hard on everybody. No, I and, was I was glad that yeah. I saw because um, having seen the the premiere in LA, I got to go and see it in London. I think that was the last oh. concert I went to before everything locked down, and that was with his own singers, um, oh, and yeah. it was just yeah. it was the same but different. There was just like a different level of clarity to it all. Um, mm -hmm. but we yeah. were talking to some of them afterwards and they were saying you know that some of the pieces were really hard to get through mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. did a workshop with him in the afternoon oh, um, wow. and we got to sing Welcome Home and that was a bit put oh. because it's just like and Tony was there so it just made it like sort of better and but harder mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so you just felt like you had to sing it right and we got no practice because he, he waffled on that long and he spent that long going through lots of runway and answering questions and doing everything uh, that we do. So yeah. he said, right, we haven't got time to, let's just sing it. And I was like, oh my yeah, God, I've got to sing Welcome Home while yeah. Tony's sitting here and I'm just like, no. But yeah. it was fabulous. It was absolutely fabulous. It's such a beautiful piece yeah. to sing, even though it's yeah. so sad. The, mm -hmm. When I saw um, the Eric Whitaker singers on tour, what was it, three years ago, I think it was, they did, that was the testing for um, You Rise, I Fall. Oh, oh yeah from sacred veil vale. well, that was and, the first one i heard and yeah. the evolution of how he worked through that for the tour it was different from new york than to yeah. milwaukee when i saw it to la yeah. with master corral but those few singers singing that those pieces are just because everybody has their own part there's no yeah very rare doubles in there and it just Ooh. has a so such a different sound quality to it and a different tone with his Eric Whitaker singers than yeah. hearing it with the master crowd totally yeah. different piece yeah. and then you rise I fall is to uh, different because he had the men and the women singing the opposite of what it is now now the men sing the one part yeah. to represent Tony and then you know but to watch that evolution but oh Jeez, he and, it, and he changed it even again when it was in London. He changed oh, really? parts of it. Yeah. In 2019, he changed it. Oh, I he guess. changed oh, yeah. it. Like DCI and Y. And I liked it. I was like, oh, I really like this because I, I had first downloaded whatever it was that the yeah, group he, had done the year before. No, so I like ours now. better. <laughs> we were the only ones to ever sing that with words, weren't we? Right. right. It's never been done again. Mm -mm. He oh, took all the words out after that. It, all out. <laughs> it needed that quiet home thing it had a lot more uh, ocean feel in it it was really interesting the men had like these wave sounds uh it, it's it's beautiful but when you have the rest of the piece it was too much yeah so, yeah cut it out when we went the first time in 2013 it was the actual uh, u.s premiere tour for the eric whitaker singers uh yeah. so we did get to hear them you know then and it was really cool and then a bunch of them came to the house of bruce for the party afterwards oh, so got to meet a bunch of them it was so cool and, those guys you know, can drink <laughs> oh yeah they're party animals <laughs> and i was handing out all the t-shirts they made <laughs> that was crazy but they can sing at a dry uh, talk about sight singing oh, oh yeah eric will hand them stuff and yeah. they've never even looked at it, and they yeah. were seeing it. He did that to them in London. He just finished the Hallelujah, and and he literally gave it to them ten minutes before they walked on stage, and oh, they'd great. never even rehearsed it. That and they is, that, that is such a complex piece. That is so. It took me forever yeah. to learn. And I'm just now. like <laughs> you're <an> evil now. <laughs> I've had uh, Jen and Colette and Donna. The video that my husband took when uh, oh, the uh, little yeah. green room visit it, it was so hysterical <laughs> that was a, that was a special moment with eric that was that was yeah. the day two days after jenny died yeah and, and he and uh jenny um i got them connected that was a that was a good hug <laughs> yeah it's like oh after everything with jenny but um and then we did our two BC projects for, for Jenny. Did Seal Lullaby. Uh -huh. She, was, she yeah. was the moon and Seal Lullaby. 
Yeah. What was the other one? I only did wings. The winds beneath my wings. Oh yeah. Okay. I did both those. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Jackie, you did that one too, right? Didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That was another Jack thing. That was mm -hmm. great. It was good. Yeah. Very so, nicely done. <laughs> it was. It was. Yeah. Eric, Eric is a hoot. <laughs> Didn't Jack organize some, we were dancing to the Harlem Shake? Oh, uh, right. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> he's in I his bee know. costume. That's yeah, right. Yeah, he's a little killer bee. That's thing. on BC somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go find, gotta go find that. I'll have to look that. that one up. That because every now and then it'll pop I didn't up. get a chance to do that one, so oh, yeah. no, yeah. I didn't get a chance. But that the heart, it's it's in BC Friends, and I'll have to. Yeah, have to and we all had to contribute some silly thing. So I had some ridiculous get up at the time. You know? I'm wearing Ooh. my monkey PJ. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I think I had a men in T-shirt on, of course. Probably. <laughs> Yeah. No, I decided to keep out of that one. <laughs> we do have some questions that I, that were sent in that we have not answered yet. Oh, so. inquiring minds want to know. Kathy <clears throat> wants to know, how on earth do these people do it? I've watched virtual choirs online, but I have no idea of the process. Chad, yeah. you want to take that one? Sure. Yeah, we're, we're passing that to you, Chad. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the tech master. It's never the same okay, because right. you're always... I mean, if you're if you're with any project, you look back and say, OK, how do we do this better next mm -hmm. time? Right. It's an iterative process. You know, it's been it's way different. You know how it was done for virtual choir one with Eric Whitaker, to how he did it for number three to how he did it for number six. Right. Mm -hmm. But really, the, the general premise is all the same. Someone records the, with a track. So prior to then you would create a a track for your singers to sing to so if it's just your conductor doing his thing and then that gets sent out to the singers the singers would have that on a screen and then have their music either in their hand or on an ipad or whatever it is however it works they do their 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 job doing the singing thing recording to the camera and then from there uploading it to uh somewhere that it can be accessed to to do all the editing, putting them all together and all that. Right. So, you know, one of the important things I've, I've, I always stress when you're, when you're asking your singers to do things like this is to make sure that everybody claps at the beh beginning oh, of the yeah. video. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the oh, clap. Yeah. I am and then, the <laughs> clapper. I'm a, it's in one of my blooper reels. I am such a terrible clapper. I, you know, I am I'm so talented in many other things, but I have such a, <laughs> yeah. Forget it. And, Forget and, and it. we did a couple projects last year um, with with my choir that I sing with, and I said, "Okay, well, you know, we got to do the clap." So conductor did the clap. Well, then when I got videos in, people clap, but they clapped here. So oh, when, oh. Yeah. So I couldn't, I couldn't Way actually sync them up because I didn't see. It. So I had to like watch their arms and how the like <laughs> when this happened. <laughs> it was it was such a mess. Anyways. What happens after that is sometimes some people use Final Cut Pro on, on the Mac. I, I'm on Windows, so I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro. It's basically the same as pulling up 30 videos all at once and, and clicking play on all of them all at the same time and hoping for the best. So um, instead, you know, you're dragging the elements in and you have to resize them and do different things, right? To make it look like a, if you're trying to do a grid or whatever you want, wanting to do. Well, um, I think you need to explain though about the clapping and the syncing so people yeah. know is that, you know, that it winds up or else you get people starting at all different times. That's right. and don't yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. And it drives everybody crazy. And it's yeah. just like in Hollywood when they have the clapper, it's the exact oh. same thing because you see <laughs> yep. when the editor is in there and they're, they're trying to sync because a lot of the time they're not recording the audio on the same device as the video. Right. Yeah. So what they're looking for is the spike in the audio for the clap as That's well as high. watching the frame, the exact mm -hmm. frame when that clapper touches together right? right so that's what what that's what you're looking for so you basically line up all the videos so everybody's like this at the same time and then you're lining up all the audio to make to see that little that little tick in the audio from there hopefully you know everybody's all lined up and that you know everything should be good it's not ever just that easy i can tell you that but 
you know, it, it, it's a good starting point. And then from there, you do some audio cleanup. If you're denoising, you know, getting rid of the furnace that's running in someone's house or things like that. You know, it'll, we use the chickens, the cat, the the, exactly the chainsaw, the whatever. And and from there, you know, you use something like Audacity. Those are the tools that a lot of people use: is Final Cut Pro, um, Audacity, Premiere Pro. And then, yeah, it's just producing that final piece and however your creative wants to be. It sounds simple. It's not, though. It's a pain it's in the butt. Simple. I, I would add a little bit to that for um, just from like the singer's perspective. So you get your track and you practice it. And then for virtual choirs, you have the track in one ear. And it, yeah. like, oh, so you yeah. have that kind of hooked up to one device so that you can hear the track but then you're not recording that track like onto your audio and your video that you're sending and something that you have to think about when you're doing a virtual choir is like I mean I'm finding and I think a lot of people have to like stack things to like put your camera yeah. on it Boxes, oh, yeah. and then tripods, duct tape <laughs> yes everything <laughs> And make sure you have two devices, so one to record on, one to listen to your audio on, and then hopefully you can, once you've got that all set up, and it sometimes takes a long time, you can record and then send that in. And try to hide the earbuds. Right, that's what it. I was just trying to show. Looks so nice you're trying to do one <laughs> yeah, in, here. Yeah, yeah, I hate it when ears. people wear the headphones because it just looks yeah. too uh, dorky. And so here you, know, you go. Like, you don't want the headphone in, and you can't see. <laughs> that adds to the more of the professionalism. It just takes time. Yeah, and you, and it just you, looks I, neat and clean. Learn, the yeah. other hard part is when you're looking at yourself in the mirror. I mean, you're, it's like looking in a mirror, right? And so I'm looking at myself in the camera and I want to go, okay, so that, sh no, that shoulder. No, I wait, just no, did no, that. Why do I do yes. my hair and go put Oh, yeah. And, oh, wait, oh, stippling. I want this. <laughs> no, where's, <laughs> how do you get your hair? Oh, you know. And trying to get that to match when you take take after take after take. So, yeah. so different when you do different time. parts, here's the thing: I do put my hair up here or do, change a top or whatever. When yeah. you do, that. <laughs> yeah. So I look back, I go, wait, that's my alto one, or that's my yeah. soprano two one. Yeah. And you just change a little bit, and it's like, oh wait, wait, how are you? Oh, oh no, this goes oh <laughs> fell out. You know? I know. Sometimes and, labeling the naming the the files is tricky. You know, it, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes it just I can't get it to work. It gets in there somewhere, and a lot of people have been using uh, either Dropbox or Google Drive, mm -hmm. and they, they've simplified that. So they'll just send you a an invitation thing, and then you just put your little doodad, your little yeah. file in there, and it's mostly working okay. But sometimes okay, but how many happen, of you have? thought you hit the record button <laughs> oh yes yeah That's oh, yeah. Cool. and you get it's a fabulous take and then because sometimes still I on have, photo. Like, I hit the record were... button in like iMovie or something like that and then I'm then I have like the video on top and then you've got sometimes music because you may only have <laughs> a conduct the you don't have the the words on the the video and and then you think you hit it and then you put everything away and you're oh or the last one I did, I was looking at myself. This is really stupid beginner mistake. I was looking at me and not the camera. So yes. I was like, oh, let's get it. It's like, I don't have time to redo this. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I just tossed it on that one. But yeah, you know. where, where's your eye line? Where, where, where yeah, where's, where's the eye line? Because like? with my tablet, it's like way over in the top left, you know, and then if, whatever I've got to be looking at is, you know, so. <laughs> I try, or if I'm using my big screen, I put the big computer monitor up on a box or two, just mm -hmm. enough that I can kind of see it above wherever I've got my tablet and my phone next to it on other boxes. So it's yep. crazy. Or I'm in the bathroom and it's on the the uh, just the corner of the sink. Mm -hmm. Or other times I'm sitting in the tub or standing in the tub. I have done <laughs> everything. <laughs> You know, but the light was still a problem. Here, I've got all this light. Crazy that's the key light. thing is the I know light. I have. Yeah, it looks bright as heck to me, and then really dingy in the thing. So that's why I bought this, which went off. Did I kill it already? Oh, oh, the well, ring light. Had to recharge my little ring light. It didn't last very long. They're awesome. Push, push. Mm. You think this is big enough? I don't know. I'll have to try it 
It depends on how bright it is. Yeah, but it clips easily onto the phone. I've done some good takes, like really good takes, but then, you know, this is like the music. Oh, then the paper's out, right? <laughs> or, or, or like the top of the microphone, and you're like, ah, oh. oh, yeah. But it looked okay when I was like checking before I hit record. What I resigned to is recording my audio and my video separately. I'll record the audio so I don't have to like look a, way, a particular way. And I can make funny faces and do whatever because I do when I sing my eyebrows raise and do different yeah. things, right? As you do, right? I mean, that's just all about engaging right, your mask. Right. But then when I record the video, then I just, I lip sync it. Right. So, that, that's you know. the easiest way to do it. Because I started doing that because wearing glasses, you know, you uh, trying to see and you're reading and then yeah, you know, that's some light reflection. I like to do it without my glasses for the, for the video, but then I can't read. So yeah. sending yeah. it separately is that's, that's the next level up. <clears throat> the recorder mic thing on my phone, that seems to work. It's not very professional at all, but you yeah, know. that works. Yep. It works. Yeah. You yep. know, I just keep my tech as simple as can be because I just can't handle that stress. Okay. And I don't, there is not a computer class slow enough or someone patient enough to teach me all the crap. But that's what we do in BC. We help each other out. Yeah. And we take the time, you know, and say, hey, I got a question. And, you know, I, I recorded for DC and I on my Blackberry out, it was 14 below zero. Because Julie Suen had yeah. recorded hers on the beach in Florida. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. like, yeah. so, yeah. That's just so wrong. Yeah. I, I happened to be going snow camping, actually, right right down from where I live. And it was 14 below. And I'm out there all, you know, bundled up. <laughs> but on my Blackberry. I'm recording. Well, there you through, go. Recording wow. the Blackberry. Just uh, the eel. One student, Muyao, asks, what do you do when you have problems on stage, like your mic isn't working or you're singing the wrong notes? <laughs> How do you deal with problems on stage? I mean, I would speak to that a little bit. You kind of just like keep on smiling. I think that I think that the audience, the, it's hard for audiences to see performers in distress. So our job as performers is to like try and fix it but do it in a way that doesn't look stressful <laughs> yeah humor so yeah <laughs> like you miss a note to... yeah you miss a note you this just keep live art, you know? <laughs> i think that's what makes live performance particularly appreciable is that yeah. it's not perfect right you're not listed yeah, okay. you don't have a per it, it, that's what gives a, a performance life so yeah if there happens to be a a violin somewhere that makes a squeak or or someone hits a flat instead of a natural or whatever you know that's not that's that's part of the that's part of the performance right that that's what gives that particular performance its character but yeah like i mean generally speaking i mean it, you know i with with mics and things like that you generally have someone working the board somewhere that's you know gonna be pretty quick to figure things out and if they need to swap out a mic you know maybe a hand will reach out from the from the, the curtain hand. or whatever yeah, the magic, magic hand <laughs> um usually i get the magic hook but uh it's uh <laughs> it's you know that's yeah i mean it, it happens and and you just you gotta roll the punches and and uh just like with anything else, you, your car breaks down, you improvise, right? So, right. And nobody knows what it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah. Right? You, who, who knows? Maybe you rehearsed it that way and it's supposed to yeah. be that way in the production. You know, it's, it's you just got to let it, um, you don't let it show. Here I'm eighth grade, you know, my Catholic school, you know, to the, the big kids in the school. And I'm doing the Moonlight Sonata for my, for the talent show. My mom was not my piano teacher. I did by this time I was doing on my own and, and, but I had other <laughs> teachers. And so I froze blank, total blank. I was like two measures in just nothing, oh, no. nothing. I was coming out of my head about what to play next, what was going to come next. And I'm like looking at my mom, like help. What's yeah. I just need the next note. What's the next note now? go on right she wouldn't help me oh 
Oh, now, oh, oh. who is helping? She's like, <laughs> you're on your own. I don't know you <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> it's like, you've got to figure this out on your own, but without yeah. saying that, but that's what she, I'm like, are you I'm like, I haven't done it, you know, I'm like, I'm like dying in here. I'm like melting to the floor of embarrassment, but started from the beginning again and made my way yeah. through, you know, it there just, um, and it was all about learning how to come from it with, within yourself to do it. And so you start to start over. Okay. You know, and mm -hmm. it was a big lesson for me, but boy, it was like, you're right there. You know what the note is. You're yelling at me all the time. No, it's a D sharp. Not a C natural. Uh, I'm like, oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. I think that, you know, there's been times when that's happened, you know, at I'm trying to think of the last time that I've been into performance and we had to restart something. It's been a long time, of course, because of the it pandemic happens. and all that, of course, too. But yeah, stuff happens. And if something hits the rails Ooh. hard, you know, you got, you just, you just got to take, take the punches. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. you try your best to be as technically accurate and, and you want to make that performance as memorable and, and in the best way possible, you know, but you know, sometimes, you know, you, you start a piece in one key and you finish it in another and you go, well, yes. hang on a minute. What happened? Like oh, the whole ensemble never. is now, you know, uh, yeah. a whole tone sharper. Like what the heck happened? Right. And, yeah. and that, you know, it's, it, ha it just happens. Right. And, and yeah. you go, okay, so what did we do this time? Okay. Let's not do that next time. And how do we <laughs> yeah. not, and, and how do we not do it next time? Right. So oh, it all just comes yeah. with practice. You rehearse and that's mm -hmm. why you rehearse. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Two years ago at Carnegie Hall, I do not remember which song it was, but it was a very emotional song that we were singing. And I'm up on the back row. And a coughing fit. Oh, all of a sudden, just out of nowhere. And I hadn't, I was not singing or anything like that. And it's like. Mm hmm. You know, trying not to just like, oh my God. Oh, and it's like the worst. You know, quiet and the men are singing quiet and it's really emotional. And I'm like, oh no, please no, hurry. No, no, no. <laughs> just just drop down. Where I can, where there's some loud singing finally, so I can kind of go <clears throat> like this, right? Yeah. And it's not, you know, I know it's a long time. I'm like, oh, oh my God. Right, right, so oh, right. that's and just I mortifying. have half a stick of gum in my pocket. <sighs> and I'm like, like, oh, you know, hallelujah. Well, <laughs> trying to get some moisture down my throat. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that would just be the mortifying thing to start coughing in the middle. I mean, it was quiet. And, and if, you know, once you get that, that cough, it would be not stopping. Yeah. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. oh my God, I'm going to stage to go get some water. Where am I going to go <laughs> with hide and never be seen again? <laughs> you know? And it was just luckily. <laughs> Yeah, I survived. But that was just like, it's just, you never know when something's going to happen. So, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what happened to me at the end this last time when we went in 2019. I couldn't even sing. I don't know if I caught a bug on the plane, you know, this is before. Thought, Marty, your little thing jumped up into the back row to me. I don't, was that <laughs> that same one? Yeah, I don't know. It was, the same, oh. it was the same concert. Other people were getting sick, but I don't know. By the, we got there, you know, a bit early and hubby and I had run around and done the extra touristy things that we hadn't done the time before. By the Thursday or Friday, we started rehearsal. I couldn't sing a single note the whole time. So I had to lip sync. Carnegie Hall is sad, but true, but at least they still let me do it. And I still feel bad about it, but what can you do? I busted my butt for months to learn all these songs and do all the things. <laughs> so I don't know. And then a tickle came up right at the very end. It's just like, oh, <gasps> it was just horrible. <laughs> and it still took me a week or two to fully get rid of it by the time we got home. So I don't know. I hope that never happens again. Well, the time before Colette had all the space around her in 2018 because, <laughs> because uh, Judy and I ended up sitting down the front row because of, we just couldn't stand anymore. And it was just like, I would have, I would much rather have stood up there because you cannot yeah. hear anything yeah. sitting down <clears throat> on the front row oh. in the, of, of an ensemble. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot hear the piano. 
I could not hear oh. the person behind me. I could not hear her. I could barely hear Judy next to me. And she's alto two and I'm alto one. I mean, oh. you're surrounded by what, 200 voices mm -hmm. and you can't hear anything. The voice oh. traveled above. So everything oh. went above my head and the piano with the way it was open was very loud. And then Eric is right there, you know, he's just like <laughs> three feet away. And I'm like, I don't know where I am half the time because you can't hear where your entrances are because it, it, yeah. it was the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest experience. Mm. You don't want to be the one singing that one note. Yeah. Not when your time was in, you know, with his music, you're coming in and out, in and out all the time, you, you know, with your, yeah. I, I don't want to be that person right in the very first row. And then him hearing mm -hmm. that wrong yeah. note. So I only <laughs> sing like at 50%. I did not sing at full volume where I would have with Colette had I been up there in the middle. And that was a great spot right there. Yeah. yeah. Right in the middle. That. There's Colette all by herself. Oh. <laughs> you went down there. Yeah, I had the most room ever. I did the biggest claps and shakes in the oh, middle of cloud. Room to go. <laughs> Everybody else is all scratched in there, right? Yeah. Like, like, oh. yeah, yeah. No, that's just it's it's really hard when you can't hear and acoustics are just yeah. like yeah. yeah. So uh, the most yeah. challenging acoustics I've ever performed in was a it was like a sun dome in England. And I can't remember which where exactly it was i think it might have been Ripon. there it was a dome of of stained glass it was very beautiful and it was this uh, oh. sunroom type thing it was quite quite nice the, the the band i was there with the concert band was there so we were supposed to play in the sun dome and so okay that was fine i sat down and started playing and all i could hear was a clarinet on the other side of the band. That was all I heard. If you've ever been in one of these rooms, it is incredible because it wow. was it was like you I was they were across the room. I could I could I could hum, I could say whatever and it sounded to them like I was in their ears. Wow. And they wow. were in my ears. It was the weirdest thing. I couldn't hear the people right be right beside me, but I oh. sure damn could hear that clarinet. <laughs> and it was it was it was very challenging for all of us to play because and it's wow. weird like there's a there's a church in St. Albert here that has a very similar acoustic. And depending on where you're standing, you know, like you can hear the person that's, you know, 12 feet away from you way better than the person that's half a foot from you right it's great yeah, wow. yeah. Our cathedrals like that we sing in a cathedral at christmas in liverpool yeah and there's a four second reverb in the building anyway oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Awesome. it's weird. so high and there's like 150 to 200 of us in the choir so you can literally hear if you're lucky the person next to you if they're not sure and they're not singing out you literally can't hear anything except the band and yourself it's yeah. just a nightmare so you've oh, got to be no. glued to the conductor because you can't yeah. hear anything and what you do oh. hear is probably already finished so <laughs> it's just and what you're hearing oh, is right. what you're generally used to hearing you know you're used to hearing the tenor two beside you not yeah. the soprano one across the choir i mean you should be listening across the choir but generally well, you know you're listening for yeah. you know, <laughs> you're, you're totally thrown off right so yeah. you know, you know you're listening you. for you know, you're, you're counting still and you're watching your conductor, of course, but you're still listening for a cue from the the bassoon yeah. beside you, not from the tuba um, <laughs> across the clock. Right? Go it's, tuba! Uh, <laughs> More that. Very Cowbell. different. Yeah. <laughs> well, things happen, right? It's just right, like, yeah. zoo. And, it's out, and that's out of your control as a performer. It's like, well, yeah. you got to roll with the punches and roll with you, gotta, it. you gotta make you, you that's that's why you again, that's why you practice. You practice, practice, yeah. practice so that you know your part as 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 best as you possibly can. And I know I'm yeah. I'm very bad about practicing, but it is it, it'll, it'll you know, the more you do, the, the more benefit and more reward you'll get out of it. Yeah. Just keep smiling and pretend it wasn't you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's kind of yeah. hard when it's obvious that it's you because it uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. a, a couple of weeks ago I was playing piano and the the cantor she she went up to to do the the psalm. I forgot to transpose down for her. Er, uh oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I, I can't remember the transposition, but I, I was off by a significant amount. Oh, so no. I played the introduction, and I almost got through the entire introduction, and then I went, oh, oops. So I, hands off the keys, looked up at her, <laughs> said, wait. Reboot! <laughs> Yeah. And like you said, you just have to roll with the punches. You yeah. just do it calmly and everybody will stay calm as well. Right. Mm -hmm. I yeah. always find it funny in choir when you have a little solo by accident when you start singing. <laughs> and you're not to oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Now I know. Solo yeah. Yeah. Wrong and strong, you know? Just do it. Just go there. <laughs> and hey, yeah. if you're performing jazz... You know, I was I was always oh, well. taught that if you play a wrong note, you play it again yeah. because then it's like, oh, I they meant to do that. Yeah. And <laughs> though I haven't been a huge fan of memorization, it, you know, it's easy when you're young. You have brain cells that function <laughs> in high school or college, and you have choir like every day. You know, I didn't have any troubles with it back then, particularly. But then when you don't sing for a long time and learning to do all that for Eric. Um, so in addition to doing those trips with him, our church choir has gone on two or three little trips, which I don't know if that'll ever happen. But in 2016, we went to San Francisco um, and sang at Grace Cathedral. It's this huge, really old Episcopalian cathedral, a bit of the sound lag thing. Um, and it was with another company similar to DCINY. It's called um, MCP, Musician Choral productions or something like that it's, it's similar they kind of work together and it was wonderful with this great director alan dr alan rains from baylor university he was so funny but he was a bit testy that day of the concert because they didn't have our riser set up and we were crammed in cheek by jaw like little sardines on the thing you couldn't we had music but it's a good thing i couldn't even use it so it's a good thing we were doing the foray requiem that time couldn't, I just gave up. It's like, oh, I, I know this. I've done it because we've done it at our church. I got to do the PA Yesu and things like that. So I totally knew it. And it's like, I didn't have, couldn't stress with that. So there was that connection, you know, that you do get with the music and the, the director is, it's like almost, it's a religious experience, you know, it's, it's, it's a symbiotic thing. And Eric's all about that. You know, he said, he likens his EWS, his Eric Whitaker singers to driving a Ferrari, the oh, flick yeah. of a finger, you know, oh, yeah. they're, they know just what to do. And mm. it's like driving this super high tech speed race car or whatnot. You know, it's fun. Join the choir, see the world, have friends everywhere, do things <laughs> eventually. Or even if we're just, you know, this is the world right here on your screen. Or Meetups are just really um, been fabulous. I think out of everyone here, I have probably met more virtual choir friends in person around the country and well, outside of Hitomi, if Hitomi was here. but um, Oh, yeah. Hitomi yeah. comes to everything, everything. <laughs> but like just to do meetups at any time it doesn't have to be a um you yeah, know Eric a related thing and that's the that's the fun part of it is that we'll find you know like when when jackie when jackie and marty when i came and saw you guys you know when we met up there just for the afternoon you know for a few mm -hmm. hours and it was um, so much and then fun. we were online we even had the computer and we were yeah. uh, outside at the outdoor mall and then we yeah. were hooked up yeah, on the internet probably. doing yes. a google hangout that's yeah. right right yeah. and we've done that also with you jane you know where i've been on mm -hmm. the other side when jean was there you know and yeah you know, jean so, yeah no <laughs> i first fish taco was had in irvine <laughs> yeah no so i mean i think there was one weekend where i had virtual choir meetups in chicago la yeah and nebraska wow in like a matter of three days i think mm -hmm. way has the uh the the vc world um uh, award for meeting having a vc meetup underwater oh, underwater it right the great barrier oh, wow. week. yeah she wow. does scuba dive yeah. with, with one of the the vc people oh right. how cool uh, on, uh, yeah, uh, funny. yeah Andrea, met up underwater andreas or oh, i can't remember yeah, Ooh, something like I that. hadn't heard yeah. of that. That's yeah, so no, wild. she did that underwater. That's wow. funny. Wow. Hmm. And then at the Empire State Building, but you know, some of us have done that too. But it's like yeah. uh, 
Yeah. Ooh, balloon meetup. I'm waiting for a balloon. Colette's, Hot air balloon you know, meet up. Colette's <laughs> done New York, LA. You've done Canada and yeah. England. And, you know, they're just. Mm. The I've got a few more to do yet. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago, you're the, you haven't been here with me. I've been with you in the other two words. Yeah. Donna has seen me in all of the places. Oh, so yeah. DC meetups are just are just uh, because it's like we're already even we already know each other. We already know each yeah. other. Yeah. We haven't met each yeah. other in person and then we see each other. But we're then, like, snap, I know you. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> Total connection. Right. Yeah. That's I keep missing a few people. I still have missed way every time because I couldn't go the one year she went. Missed Colette a bunch of people there. that year. Colette yeah. and I were there with uh, with way singing. Yeah. With Peter. Oh, yeah. So that was yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. Because there's so many of us that cannot meet in, in real life because of just where you are. And, mm -hmm. and when I try to meet up people, I try to bring in the group, you know, and yeah. share it like we share it in BC Press yeah. Friends, mm -hmm. or like if I'm doing, uh, I've done this, I don't know how many times where I where I'll be in an event and do live, like I do, I did it in Milwaukee where Eric had oh. his workshop and rehearsals, and oh, I great. streamed the entire rehearsal, and then I said I'm I'm like texting, I'm like, okay, what do you want? What questions do you want me to ask Eric? Oh. And so I, I've done that several times and say, okay, from the group, because I know they are never going to be able to have that experience in person. Yeah. We're one big mm -hmm. family. And the one really fun thing is when we had those VC meetups, the live listening parties and oh, it, yeah. be listening to Eric and we're all like going, talking during a concert, which was so much fun, right? We're all, <laughs> we all have expressed that we could, we could talk our way through the concert. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and we'll be looking up things that on, you know, explaining what the piece is about and stuff. And then we just have our thread, like we have here, our, our chat going on and just talk away for the entire piece. We're like, Hey, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to Those rehearsal things were cool too. I, I hope he does more of those. He kind of said or intimated that he might, where he gave us the, the pieces for or the snippets of the sacred veil and you know you knew oh, which songs you the YouTube thing. well i think once yeah you, there's a little YouTube bit older. rehearsal things and that was fun yeah so, no those are know. those were really good too yeah so, so. well and it's, it's of... ever evolving and that's the thing yeah we're yeah. always evolving we don't stay the same mm -hmm. no we don't no. we just stay just wonderful you know we just stay wonderful it wonderful, is wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. What can we say? <laughs> but look how we're Let's, able to have this this conversation now compared to you know the limitations of you know even Google Hangouts were really hard. Yeah. When Eric would have yeah. a Google yeah. Hangout and it'd be like only for like ten people, and then, yeah, and then you, you know we're out. Out, they're all left out, you know. And yeah. so technology is just really it's getting oh, better. I remember mm -hmm. back in, yeah, back in like 2013 or not even 2011, mm -hmm. you know, we would be sitting in a hangout and you could only have 10 people in that hangout. Yeah. Right. And then they yeah. open it up to 30 and, and Ooh. you could have 30 people in, in a wow. hangout, right? And holy yeah. smokes. And I mean, I remember sitting in Google hangouts for hours, you know, Rona May yeah. as well. And <laughs> Jan and you know like <laughs> especially when you know we had virtual car three coming out you know we spent a lot of time just in hangouts and we um, sometimes you're we playing I games and doing different things it was a lot of fun and mm. and you know we built that amazing relationship well then we decided that well because Eric was in was you know singing or, or conducting in in Vancouver with the Vancouver Chamber Choir so oh, okay I well know. you know what we better go out there because I think that's probably the closest um we're ever gonna get to him being yeah, right? yeah. so and don't need a passport to go there either so that was good yeah, yeah. so yeah I, we ended up going and, and meeting up in vancouver and and oh. uh you know of course it was you know we had never i mean i i don't think i'd met you 
in person yet, Rona May, but I flew through Calgary and then we took we flew and then we flew into Vancouver together, right? Yeah. And um, <laughs> you know, it was just like you know, you, you, you knew you yeah, you guys you picked this, you picked us up and and Never suffered sure. through Vancouver traffic oh. and and it wow. just felt like we we were it, we we weren't strangers. We picked up exactly yeah. where we left off, yeah. um, yes. virtually, yeah, right. and it just it was a it was a fantastic weekend where mm. you know we had a, you know playing music in a music store and getting kicked out tell that story we've and that's okay waiting. i mean nah. that's, you know we had a really great time and then of course you know even even when we met when we sat down for dinner with eric and 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 oh, we were yeah. talking with him Ooh. you know he yeah. knew who we were he knew uh, you know he was it was very just natural right it oh, didn't yeah. uh -huh. feel like it was a you know, we were do, having to do introductions or things like that. It was just, mm -hmm. you know, we knew everyone knew each other and it was just yeah. like some old friends getting together for dinner. Yeah. The, the funniest thing I remember about Eric was one of the, the members and I can't remember her name off my top of my head, but she was looking at her watch and said, Eric, you know, you really need to get back, you know, because, you know, going to walk to the orphan from the white spot. Right. Yeah. And and I remember <laughs> him raining. taking taking his baton out of his breast pocket and saying, well, they can't start without me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. worry. You know, I'll get there. You know, they can't start yeah. without me. So, and it was, you know, talk about cloudburst. You know, but remember when we walked out and the rain was just coming was down oh, wow. in oh. buckets. Of course, it's Vancouver, right? So it was yeah. just, we had a cloudburst literally on the way to the yeah. Lost yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. <laughs> Um, there's one question from one of my students that I do want to address, and then we can, we can wrap up. So she asks about nerves. So how do you deal with nerves? I mean, I'll, I, I can start with that one. I don't deal with nerves super well. <laughs> um, I have definitely found, like, as a performer, it's hard. It's hard. Like it's scary to get up in front of a lot of people and, you know, especially with singing, like I'm an actor, but with singing, like your voice can do crazy things when you're nervous and like things you never thought it could do. Good things. <laughs> like it just, yeah. And not good things, mm -mm. just like cutting out. And like, I think though, a lot of it has to do with like breath. Breath is so important. Like if you're, when you get nervous you, you want to stop breathing and if you if you breathe that really helps i think also grounding just making sure you're grounded in your body and also like practice like if you have rehearsed that piece specifically with singing or with playing the piano if you've rehearsed that piece over and over and over again and you have it down pat when you're not nervous when you are nervous, there will be little things that will creep in, but you'll have it so down pat that it won't be as disastrous if you didn't have it down pat, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's oh, rote yeah. memory. So it's just, you're, it's just falling yeah. back on. Yeah. And yeah. also faking it till you make it pretend yeah. you're not nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Never let them see you sweat. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how actors or opera or anybody who has to memorize all this stuff oh you know a song here a song there maybe but even that is not easy for everyone but you know somehow they do it i think you have to have a special kind of brain seriously yeah. some people are more pre predisposed to to doing that or it's just practice i don't, I know. don't have that brain to memorize they keep mem you know like you can have recall of words and that's what yeah, I'm an English professor, but I don't teach literature because I can't remember dates and, you oh, know, characters yeah. and what exactly they're doing. My brain just does not work that way. I can tell you about them or even when I meet people, I can't remember names. So when yeah. it comes to doing, yeah. Yeah. So I can tell I you everything about your life story, but I can't get, give you your name. Yeah. But for me, it's like, like Amy was saying practice 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 mm. practice and because i have it in there constantly if i let it go before performance then it's going to go away it's really weird even stuff i've created choreographed written gone 
it, it goes out of my brain. I don't know how or why it's all my life that way. Um, my mom's like, why is this hard for you? I just, just the way my brain works. And so what, I always get fearful that like, you know, with the Moonlight Sonata, I'm just like going to blank and I'm not going to have that next line or I'm not going to have that next. If I'm singing in a group, I can sing the music, no problem. And remember the words and stuff. But if I'm by myself, yeah, that's oh, where thing. it's, I have to really, really, really work on that. So uh, it's just, you have to understand your style of learning. Do you have to hear it over and over again? Do you have to visualize it? Do you have to see someone else performing it to kind of, to, to give oh, you a way yeah. of how to do it? <laughs> and once you understand your style of learning, then you can then find the best way for you to keep that information in your head. And then you're not going to be as nervous because you have it already inside you, but nerves are always there. It, it, if you're not nervous, I, you're not alive. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I mean, we yeah. get nervous because we care and we want to do well. Yeah. well exactly. We want to yeah. do our best and we don't want to. Yeah. If it's possible, you know, sometimes you can arrange like a practice thing, you know, get used to doing your piece in front of people. Mm -hmm. I sang the Alleluia for my boss at CDS at Costco in our little, uh, our little day. It was so cool. And there was people heard me out in the hallway. It's like, oh, I wish I could remember that piece now. So I'd have to relearn it. It took a long time, but they were just like, whoa. And I'm not that good. I'm sure it was pretty awful, but it's like. I just made myself do it because I was, that's the first time I'd ever had to do anything that insanely hard, <laughs> you know, and taking a deep breath. I still get a little nervous and I've been cantering and doing stuff at church, although it's canter light and I connect with the songs, but take a good deep breath and think about who you're dedicating it to or what its purpose is. Yeah. Don't look yeah. at people. You can look up and above, not the usual, oh, you're, everyone's naked or in their jammies or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever works for you. But <laughs> so yeah. I've never done any solo performances and nor will I ever. Oh, but, gosh, um, gosh, you should. No, you're just really, the, the whole concept of that fills me with horror, which is why I like singing in a choir. So for me, to have to record myself and not hear anybody else filled me with absolute terror. So the first VC that I did, I can't even count how many takes I have to do because I was yeah. physically shaking in front of the camera and there wasn't even anyone else in the house. Oh, I just yeah. couldn't even bear the oh, idea no. of hearing myself sing. I just hated it so much. So I have got over that over the years but I still don't, like, other than singing around the house and driving Steve insane, <laughs> nobody <laughs> else hears me sing. I don't, yeah, I have one friend. Oh, who, shut up. I have one friend. <laughs> <laughs> one friend who I sing with. <laughs> and and she's the only other person who, who's ever heard me sing, like, outside of a choir, but I just won't do it. But I've got better now, because, like, the piece I've just done now, I did one take, listen to the first two bars and just went, God, that's so breathy, do it again. And then did it again and just went, listen to the first three notes and just went, yeah, that's fine. And just sent it because I just yeah. like, I can't, I can't yeah. do it. But I don't panic as much now because I've done it so many times. I've got, I've got the process understood and I've got the, the method of building me, me kit so that I know what I'm doing with it. Mm -hmm. But I still don't like doing it because I don't want to hear myself, but at least I get to, do it without like going into a hissy fit in, in my head but there's no way i could do a solo thing that would just be absolutely hideous i'd hate it yeah. so yeah, bless you for all you people who do it yeah. <laughs> i probably shouldn't be doing it most of the time you know and no. people are kind and don't say oh is she ever <laughs> shut up you know, <laughs> you know pitch oh my god <laughs> all the things you know but, Honestly, i couldn't if unless i knew that what I was doing was absolutely perfect. I couldn't do it. I am a perfectionist. So I, I really struggle with anything like that. So I just couldn't do anything unless I could do it like 
I don't know, an opera singer or something, whatever I'm supposed to be. I couldn't do it. So I just don't. I, that's why a choir is my refuge because I get to sing, but nobody can really hear me. <laughs> that's good. Well, there's no I in choir. We're all a team. There's something wrong. You're cover it. You know? Well, there is one. But, yeah. I know. Into whatever excuse will work. You know? <laughs> it's true. All right. Any last <sighs> things to add about virtual choir? Do it. Yeah. Just do it. Just, just do, do it. it. Just do just it. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just have You're a one of the many, and everybody yeah. else is feeling the same way. Yeah. Yeah. There is no yeah. such thing as perfection. I I used to tell my students all the time for writing because people have this fear of writing because it they wanted to have it perfect. And it's the same way with singing. How yeah. many Mozarts are there that could write perfectly and not have any corrections? So the people always have yeah. editors and there's always people have to practice and have to. So you, so you record a couple times, big freaking deal. You're not, you're oh, not, 25. not costing, <laughs> but it's not costing you anything. It's just, it's no. on your computer. You can just erase it. Fine. You know, it can go away and you can just keep the one take and there you go. You're fine. It's just with anything you do it's just getting familiar with it and and just doing it and then the next time it'll be a little bit easier and the next time it'll be easier after that and then lo and behold you're like that's with anything in life so yeah. don't let the technology or be singing by yourself uh because you really learn a lot about yourself and what you can do mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and it's not all bad you no. know you have fun and you better <laughs> I, I, cause I would hear myself. Oh, uh, here's a, tr here's a thing though, for people who try and do virtual choir, a lot of people when they're trying to record and they're listening on uh, to the track, right. And they tend to put two head, the two earphones in. You can't hear anything then. <laughs> you, can't, you can't hear yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you're not able to blend. And so I have done to take one out. Yeah. Um, and then and sometimes you down, can't even have it all the way in. It and I turn down, down the volume for yeah. doing for when I'm doing a virtual yeah. to, to yeah. try and match with another, because I, I find myself, I'm getting really pitchy. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think I'm singing the notes, right. But yeah. I can't hear myself and I'm like, Oh, trial mm -hmm. and error got me to that point to say, I got to just take, take less and less out from what I'm hearing from the track. Yeah. and rely on yourself a little bit more so that was just yeah. i wish i knew that a lot earlier <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lesson learned. comes with experience oh yeah yeah, yeah for sure well for for me if when i first heard about water night mm -hmm. i said to myself well you can be 60 and not have done it or you can go into your 60th year and say you know what did i did it. it i submitted it and i and I did it. And I wanted to have something to basically Woo! start my 60s with as, mm -hmm. as something that I thought yeah. would be pretty glorious and like, you know, a real life event, a once in a lifetime. Because honestly, I figured that that was it. I didn't know right. that there was going to be other virtual choirs coming Nobody along. Knew. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Mm -hmm. So I figured, well, you know, if this is the only, if this is my one shot at it, my moonshot, oh, I'm going to, I'm <laughs> going to take it. When... I submitted and then we broke the internet and I thought, oh, oh after all yeah. of that, you know, the, yeah. the pump up, you know, to get it in, to get it in, to get it in. Mm -hmm. So I literally, I took my music and I crumpled it up and said, well, that was ah. a good shot. And then I, and I threw it away. Oh, and so yeah. then when we were given our 24 hour reprieve, I went, oh my God, where's my music? <laughs> I, had to, I had to go through, I had to go through my garbage pile yes. to find the crumpled up music sheet. Wow. And, you know, and at least you didn't and burn it. it. You hadn't shredded it or burned it. <laughs> no, no, no. I had just crumpled it, you know, and, and just went, oh, well, you know, that's, that's done. Uh -huh. So, you know, tape it to the computer, you know, so I could see it, you know, so you could sing, you know, with the track. Uh -huh. and, yeah, yeah. And, and if you can song. find me in, in water night i still can't find me i can find myself in all everybody else and all the other virtual choirs but i can't find me up and down every single and they say well you're in there i'm like i can't i still I, can't find me. i, I found myself I, twice i think i, I found myself in that one but i didn't really i can't swear to it that in uh 
fly, uh, bliss, paradise, whatever. Well, they call it. He changed the name on it five, three or four times. I, I call it bliss. It's fly and, to paradise. I haven't been able to find me bliss. and sing gently either. I know I'm in there somewhere. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not even I trying. Might and, uh, have been. <laughs> At some point, <laughs> no, you're like, no, 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 that's me. Fuzzy as heck, no one will know, but yeah, just Actually, pick them. Wade a found me and sing gently, which is funny. Oh, so wow. I find everybody else and wow. all the other in all the other all the other ones. And that one was impossible. So what I did with Water Night when people said, Well, where are you? I said, Well, I'm the third row down, 52 over, and I'm on the twelfth little square on the prow. <laughs> <ship. laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I know there, I know that, I know that, I know that, I know that. <laughs> but where's he? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, it was, it was, uh, and just one last story about Water Night, uh, because it was such a, like uh, an event for me doing it. Apparently, my story about being in the light box or the paper bag and whatever was picked up, I believe, by Claire. And she said, then she contacted me. And she says, would you uh, like to be interviewed by ABC because they were doing a special <laughs> on the virtual uh, party? Wow. So apparently, mm. I got contacted and by, of course, in those days, it was Skype. The re um, reporter that was doing it says, well, you're going to be next. So, but first, you're going to go to Norway and we're going to interview uh, Sin Sonny, Sinja Fredrickson. Oh, so ever since then, Sinja and I have called each other opposite numbers because uh -huh. she was looking for me. <laughs> and I was after her. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Said it, yep. She was my first person I met in virtual choir. She was oh, wow. traveling with her sister in Chicago and um, we connected to VC friends and she was telling me where she was. And I said, well, let me pick you up from the bus station and we'll go out. And we went out for breakfast and the pancake place had oh, yeah. bliss pancakes ah! God, so good but it, it, that's eat. when virtual choir yeah. four was bliss it wasn't it wasn't flight, flight of paradise yeah. Yeah. but it was bliss and so we were eating bliss pancakes and we're yeah happy. yeah <laughs> it was it was uh yeah she was my first uh bc oh. meetup so I remember her in my first that you know that at first it was probably julie suen but you know we mm -hmm. flew out from by ourselves from california to new oh, york you know I for... yeah so colette who was your first uh i'm just trying to think then i was just thinking right okay so it would have been new york 2014 was 30, that your first one 13 i did 13 and 14 oh you did 13 too yeah i'm just trying to think if i'd met anyone before that oh maybe actually it would be in england so it would have been chrissy oh and, oh god who else was there there was chrissy vincent and there was uh liam and mm -hmm. god, i can't remember the girl's name that's really bad helen there was there was some of yeah helen that's right helen oh. and we were at a concert and we did a workshop down there and um, we did soaring leap so yeah, I think I met them down there, and then I think I'd met Maddie, but I don't think I met Maddie till after that. So, I, but I can't remember who the first person I saw was in New York because I think I only caught up with everyone at the House of Brews. That was the first place I turned up at. That's our party yeah. house. <laughs> exactly. So, and I don't know who the first person was I clapped eyes on in there. It might have been Julie. Yeah, I don't know. Very in 2013, they it was kind of a hassle because you had to have rehearsals at some hall of justice place some completely wasn't at the hotel so much better this time around i don't know when they started doing that but you know you're getting on a the subway or whatever and schlepping off to a place for a rehearsal don't be late was that the same <laughs> hall for 2014 colette yes the sound oh, was beautiful nice. inside yeah, there it was oh. nice in there but just trying nice to get the there. hotel hotel is very dampened uh, hmm that very first note singing with Eric for rehearsal. It's just like, yeah. oh, it just you up, doesn't it? Just oh. like he describes it. You just breathe in and then, you know, yeah. it's like, ah, <laughs> it's true, you know, or any really good choir. You know, just, it becomes an entity of its own or an orchestra or whatever. Mm -hmm. I miss my daughter's orchestra days. It's she played organ oh. organism. Yeah. yeah, it's a, a whole yeah. life organism you know and it, it moves and breathes and, and i'll just go to doing something right that negative energy comes all the way through and you're like oh 
know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Someone has attitude in the choir. You're just like, oh, go away. Uh, so yeah, the first <laughs> time I was there, I went to the <laughs> VIP in um, in 2013. I went to the first rehearsal and once he'd done all the faffing about, they were like, right, okay, let's all, so let's sing Sleep. And they just got through the first line. All they got to sing was the evening, um, Hank Green's in. And I, I was crying. That was it. I got to the first line and I was crying. And I was just like, oh my God, this is so beautiful already. And then he went, stop. And I was like, try that again. And, and I was like, really? It can get better than that? Oh my God. <laughs> But it was great watching it evolve. It just got better and better and better. But it was just fabulous watching that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I miss that. <laughs> Even if yeah. it's just a choir, you know, a, a church or wherever, you know, or a group. It's just the camaraderie and the bringing it about after weeks and weeks or whatever. So it'll happen again. It has to. <laughs> yeah. The pandemic. Not give up hope. <laughs> No, nope. we're starting now, so it's good. We meandered. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. Well, yes, we, we all did. interweave. Exactly. It's really, you know, how our, our stories all kind of like, you know, in yeah. our lives, you know, for yeah. the last year, we all are, have been since what, 2000. 10 2011 we've all known each other for over 10 years now wow yeah. you know yeah. and um and we share we share our lives you know it's not just music yeah so yeah. we've gone through all kinds of things you all know? kinds of stuff so you know. it's um it's and and that's the one thing about um and that was a question i think ron may about uh singing virtually versus in a choir mm -hmm. what i found Okay, you have a choir family, but you usually come to choir, you have to be quiet, mm -hmm. and then you go home. Yeah. There's not a lot of socializing unless you're friends yeah. with maybe somebody that you're sitting next to or you have one or two friends. With virtual choir, <laughs> you're friends with everybody, um, <laughs> and you get to know people more mm -hmm. intimately here in this setting than you do in a regular choir, which, which, um, cause I've done a lot of different, not surveys, but uh, discussions with people who are doing, um, research on virtual choirs, especially oh, yeah. when it was, you know, I think I've done like four different, uh, doctorate researches for different mm -hmm. people yeah. on, on virtual choirs. Cause they were just fascinating. What is, what is it about it? What makes it work and all that. And it's because of the camaraderie and the friendships that we make that is something that we wouldn't have in a regular choir. There's no way, because I've been in so many choirs and it just doesn't, it doesn't carry off into, uh, with so many people. Uh, if you think no. about it, think to, think to your choirs and how many people are you friends with? Yeah. We yeah. keep politics out of, of yeah. choir friends. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and because that has nothing to do with being friends mm -hmm. and um and we just are here for the music and we're there for each other for the other parts of our lives and mm -hmm. and that has kept us i think what has kept us going strong for all these um all these years people's lives change and people whatever you can't base a friendship based on that yeah. Well, I wasn't meeting politics. And music particular. transcends it all. It doesn't yeah. matter who you are. Mm -hmm. Music will will touch you no matter what you believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On that note, I'm, I'm just remembering Eric mentioning that um, I can't remember which one of the choirs it was, whether it was a deep field or, or maybe it was number four. But he said at that point, and I think it was he had somebody from Turkey, Libya, Jordan, Egypt, right. Israel. Okay, all basically uh, on the political arena, definitely not getting along. And yet these people from these particular countries came together to sing, mm -hmm. to sing yeah. his music. And I'm, and I'm remembering Jack talking about this poor man in Cuba. All oh, right. Yeah. One, one little one bit at a time. Bit time. Sending in his video. Mm -hmm. So that he could submit his video. Jack worked with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one. Yeah. The world would be a whole lot easier if that's all we had: music, yeah. art, food, horses, <laughs> or animals. Just, just 
keep the good stuff and let all this other mess go because all <laughs> it does is cause trouble, misery, all oh, horribleness. Well, it's yeah, it's know? really interesting because what what this whole pandemic thing has really taught us is what do we have? You strip everything away. You couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't do anything. You have your family. You have your faith. But you also had your music was there, and music is what kept people going. It kept yeah. and and um, which is why Eric decided to do BC Six. Yeah, but it's perfect. it transcends everything else. You know, you just have to. Uh, um, I lost my train of thought. Ah, it was a good thought. It was. Yeah. They were on a roll. I was on yeah. a really good roll. But but you get the essence of what it is about what's what's really there. You know, yeah. in our lives, and yeah. you know, throw the politics away, throw all this other. It doesn't doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It it means something, but it's not there. We can't. Um, yeah. You can't live our life that it. way yeah. and have it control every moment that you're awake. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more content, don't forget to uh, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. If you've got some ideas for future content, please add them down too. Uh, next month I've got, I can't remember how many musical martial artists, but there's going to be at least six of us, and we're going to talk about the common threads one. between all the arts that we practice. So some do photography and music and martial arts, and some are writers and do music and martial arts. So we'll, we'll talk about how everything's connected and some cross-training, uh, how, how we turn everything into a cross-training opportunity. So look forward to that, and we'll catch you in the next video. So take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.